Hey, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome to another segment of Critical Dialogue. That's right. We are here and we just want to thank God for all you all that's tuning in with us. All right. Because we got another power pack show for you. Quality man, how you week been, bro? How's everything? Man, it's 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 been a week, man. So hey, it's been yeah. life. Thank God for you know, you just learn to just thank God for the things that are going good and be gracious and thankful. So uh, come on, man. <laughs> Back on with us. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm right. trying to tell y'all. I get hyped every time I see this, man. Come on. Yeah. I didn't want it, but I like, you know what? I like, I ain't want to ask because I don't want to feel like we bucking them. I said, but I said uh-huh. myself today, I said, bro, it sure would be nice. <laughs> for Chris to hop back on there again, nah, you know. But man, nah. good to see you, doctor. <laughs> Hey, good to good to hey, good to be seen. <laughs> yes, good to see you, my brother. Yes, awesome, man. Hey, yeah. we're back here for another power pack show. Hey, shout out to Diallo. How you doing, my brother? Man, hey, thank God for your recovery and uh, down there in Atlanta, ATL, and everyone who's just, just tuned in as well. Thank you all so much. Hey, look, you spread the word. The dialogue is on tonight, and we're back for part two. Okay, and we're just looking forward to all your feedback and all your questions and comments. All right, concerning the topic. All right. And hey, again, you all asked for it. And so we are delivering just as we should. So again, I want you to get involved with this. And um, and and again, if you want to sow into what we're doing, feel free. All right. I'll be posting it throughout the show as well, too. All right. There's a cash app and things. And um, yeah, we, you know, we, we we are here. We are moving forward and and doing and, and, and God is getting all the glory. Yes, my brother. Yes. Hey, thank God for your healing and everything, man. So, uh, yes. Hey, all right. Hey, blessings upon you. Hey, this is the Ashley. All right. All right. Hey, we, we're excited as well. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. You yes. know what? I wanted to, uh, bless I, did uh-huh, want to point out, I did want to point out too, man, if y'all would like it, would, to me, it was a highlight or some of the things that make the show great was like, I think back like when, uh, because to see an example of us, not only conversing, but us even having questions for one another, it, it, it draws the audience in. And I remember last week when uh when, when Chris I saw the I saw the replay. I looked upon the replay today and when uh Chris had posed that question about, you know what I'm saying, the days or what if it is or not on Sunday, you know what I'm saying? I just that was just a good example of how, you know, when you see some shows on TV, they draw the crowd that watches that ain't even on with us are drawn in by just that bringing that different aspect, you know what I'm saying? Or right questioning and that interacting so when you see interaction and engagement it makes you it draws you more into paying attention to what's going on so that's one reason why you know i was definitely thankful hey what's going on uh india and and teresa like that man so yeah but uh definitely great man i'm I'm even more excited more so excited about the show now so uh and those who are tuning in on, on my twitter feed as well hey god bless you all right join in on the conversation okay again Man, we had a lot of folks viewing this last week, and again, this is what he keep um keeps us going. People being blessed by it and having conversations, and and come with questions like how Chris came with. Okay, again, there's no question that is that is off limits. All right, again, let's let's get some understanding here, you know, because this is how we learn. All right, well, hey, look, um, you know, uh, uh Crawley, want to talk about your book real quick, or or, or yeah, you, and I get yeah, just announcements. Um, for those of you all that is in the northeastern North Carolina or southeastern Virginia area, whether you want a Husky, Elizabeth City, Hertford, uh, you know, Camden, Suffolk, Virginia, Newport News, Virginia, y'all are within driving distance. Uh, next Sunday, April the 21st, man, I am taking a gathering to that part to that region man and we're excited about it so this will be a first time that you all will be able to experience uh a gathering so on sunday so if you look right here it's going to be at 2 p.m now listen i know sometimes we look at stuff and don't really pay attention so there might have been some confusion we do want you to sign up but it's only to reserve your seat we're not charging for anything and yes we are providing a full meal together i was able to confirm uh, the meals that's going to the, the food is going to be provided yesterday. So listen, in your area, Gates County, y'all pay attention. This is for you. We're specifically doing this to kind of get some ministry going over there. And we just simply want y'all to experience this type of thing is hard to describe. You would just have to be there. So anybody who's been to a gathering, man, in the sidelines, y'all comment. Y'all know what we're talking about. It's hard to describe to people. You, it's just something that you have to experience. But it is different, but it's different in a good biblical way. 
So we literally would be acting out some of the parts of the Bible that really never gets preached about. So Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but the following April the 21st, we will be in Gatesville, North Carolina, right there. Um, and we will we look to come out, have some great fellowship and just look to have some spiritual things done by way of Holy Spirit. So you all want to get there, be there if you're in the area. Now, also locally, well, locally to me, not locally to Ron or, or Chris in Greensboro. This coming Sunday, we are going to have one of these here in Greensboro, downtown Greensboro. North Carolina. And so, listen, the reason why we ask people to either confirm that they're going to be there or even fill out the, the event right is because we do have real food. We ain't going to just do no finger food. And so we want to make sure we have the proper amount of food for the people that show up. And so Greensboro, we're also going to do one two o'clock here downtown Greensboro uh, this week, this Sunday. And so we do it at a time where you can go to your church service and then you could come. So we ask the pastors to come. We ask the people to come, leaders and non-leaders to come. So, you know, just be there. And if you want more information about that, inbox myself. Or if you've ever been to a gathering uh, or you want to go to the one that we have in Greensboro or either one in Gates County, make sure that you all be there. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a blessing because it's going to be different than what we call church. But you'll see why it's going to be a blessing. So, amen. Amen. Awesome. Yes. Hey, make sure you all be there. If you're in the area, those who are, who are watching us, you know some family members, go ahead on and, and let them know. And, and also, real quick, um, I've started back doing my um radio shows, hip hop praise and other things like that. I mean, I, I've pretty much been playing a, a lot of uh, um pre-recorded stuff. But if you're an artist out there and would like to be interviewed here and there and such and such, um, you know, get with me like yourself, like Chris White. Hey, yeah, we definitely got to get together. And uh, so, um, you know, definitely want to help get artists like you out there. And hey, there's something happening too. All right. There's, there's something coming down the pipeline. Just again, I'm not going to say nothing, but again, let's just let God do it. All right. And shout out to the people on, on the Good View Network that's tuning in as well, too. All right. But uh, yes. Um, uh, but uh, uh, other than that, uh, Crawley, yeah, uh, that's all I have. We want to get right into the show because we don't want to waste our time and things like that. Well, again, yeah, because, you know, time is valuable. That's one thing that you can't get back. You can always get money back, but you can't get time back. So we want to make the most of it. And uh, uh, promo. Uh, uh, Christian says about a promo video. So. Um, oh, yeah. I just yeah, I was just that. I was just saying that, uh, you know, I remember Crawley played the uh, gathering promo video before. And for people who might be joining the show for the first time, Andre, you might, might want to run that for them. Yeah, okay. I'm going to see. That's a good idea. I'll probably see if I get that queued up. Chris, thank you for that recommendation. I appreciate that. Hey, DJ Conversion, man. Hey, definitely want to hit you up either after the show or so or, or later on this week. And all right. Again, I appreciate Transformation Radio 12.2. Okay. Um, I'm back, man. God is good. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right. Hey, well, cool. Um, uh, hey, we are doing part two tonight, guys. Part two is Great Commission Church Invitation, part two. All right. Uh, the difference between um, evangelism and discipleship. All right. And uh, hey, hey, that's been that's been uh, dealing with me uh, uh, since uh, since this last show. And, wow. and uh, even a few other folks. And um, I think Jesus Beats might come on. So. So. But uh, cause, oh, yeah, man, he, it will be good. I hadn't, we hadn't seen yeah. him in a while, man. Hopefully he definitely can yeah. make it on. Yeah, because he was telling me some things, and I said, yeah, man, you should have been on the show with us, man, and uh, it was, wow. So, again, join in on this conversation, guys, all right? Hey, hey we, 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 um, it's going to be a power fact. Yeah, Carly, you want to go ahead and start us off? You said you, you got something. Yeah, course. so we'll, and this week we'll start off, we'll get into a verse of scripture that we want to look at, as well as we got two video clips that I want to play. So we'll, you know, start off with them and playing one of them. We'll talk about it, then we'll play the other one. But just to bring people up to speed, go back and watch last week. That's part one. This is part two. So we're continuing. We was asked to do a part two. And so, and we felt it was definitely important because we didn't even, it, the conversation was so great. We didn't even get to some other things. But y'all, the reason why we are talking about this is because there is a, and one of the, the clips y'all about to see, y'all about to see, um, evidence of this disease that is going around in the church and it is a disease of trying to make what we look at as the main part of ministry trying to make that evangelistic and so that evangelism is killing the discipleship church and so the part two of that is we're going to see uh some reasons why because you can't invite and develop at the same time you either can do one or the other 
and so um and so because of that we are seeing that some of the repercussions is and you know there's two trains of thoughts here there's school two, two schools of thoughts and they both are valid schools of thought one school of thought is well, when you can't invite, you can't expect everybody to to be seasoned Christians overnight. So you have to expect that in our midst, we're going to have some immature saints, you know, because we've been around the church. We've been knowing Jesus for some time. So you can't expect people to know what we know. And we can't treat babies in the faith of evil sinners as if we expect them to know overnight how to be good Christians. That is absolutely 100 percent true. We can't penalize them for being ignorant if they haven't had time to come to know yet or either if they do know but they have they have to have time to grow and develop right there's that school of thought then there's also school of thought then these two schools of thoughts have been bumping heads throughout decades now because the other school of thought is where hey there should be a respect level for the house of god like you can't come in here acting any type of way you know being any type of way dressing any type of way like this is a house whole of faith and therefore it should come with some certain level of respect well the reason why these two views have been opposing and they shouldn't be is because we have not understood that it's okay not to invite sinners to church or on our training sessions that doesn't mean we don't love them as a matter of fact one of the biggest problems with church and christianity is this we feel that we can't service and love on sinners unless we bring them to our house. And that is problematic because what that does, that makes us docile, that makes us lazy, and that doesn't help the sense of urgency to develop seasoned Christians to let them go out and reach those people who are lost. So here's the thing, and maybe pastors wouldn't agree, and I understand why, if they are so in love with building the church ministry physically, they wouldn't like me saying this, but it's true. And I tell my people this, listen, it does it wouldn't bother me if you met a sinner and you start building a relationship with them and they really wanted to know more about Jesus, even if you went months or maybe even a year before you even invited them to our Sunday gatherings, as long as you all are developing a strengthening relationship where you are training them and they're growing in Christ, being with you, and then if you want to invite them when you feel that it's time. I have no problem with that, and I don't think Jesus does evil as long as they can be found having access. To a seasoned Christian. Now, re real quick, I like what Common Sense says, and welcome. He says, I mean, uh, he or she says, new members should be in Sunday school first. So, isn't that what Sunday school should be for? So, um, let's talk about it. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what y'all? What do y'all say? <laughs> what would y'all say to that? I mean, traditionally, that's how it's pretty much been. Is that? Well, I know in Sunday school they used to teach us the um, Bible stories and things like that. So, but that would seem like it would be a good time during Sunday school to have those type of intimate um, conversations or, or growth conversations or so into where we, we know we're asking questions and things like that. Uh, so, I mean, again, I'm just going by based upon what traditionally we have been taught. Yeah, I, do think, I mean, I would agree. Uh -huh. You know what you think, Chris? Because, I mean, I would agree from the standpoint that when you say new, to, members, new members and not people you're hey. trying to get saved, yeah, I uh -huh. think Sunday school could be a good tool if it's done in a way to where it's, 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 it's structured to bring understanding and it just don't turn into another sermon. You see what I'm saying? I, yeah. think, <laughs> if, I think if we could have time to dispense the knowledge and then allow the pupils who are in Sunday school, if we can really treat it like real school, then in school you could ask questions. In school, the teacher mm -hmm. gives a little information and then they go over it and then say, do y'all understand? And if y'all don't, we'll go back over it again. So if there it's really going to be real good school, yeah, by all means, not only do new members need to be in, but old members <laughs> need to be in it, you know what I'm saying, as well. So I would agree to that. But. Yeah, she just kind of took me back with that question. When she said Sunday school, I went all the way back to my grandmother's Free Will Baptist Church. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was Favorite. Uh, I was thinking about that. I was like, I was like, I was like, Sunday school, do they still do that? But a lot of people have um different variations. They call it uh, uh new converts classes and so on and so forth. And some people still have the traditional uh uh Sunday school, but but some some churches don't even don't even offer that at all. And and so um that's a very good question there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, what do you all guys think as well, too? Again, thanks. I thank you so much, Common Sense, for that when it comes to you know Sunday school. And uh, I mean, I can see if, if you're in you know inviting 
a an unsaved person and you know you bring them to Sunday school and uh and you know after you have witnessed to them or so and I mean yeah I think that would definitely go over well but again you know what do you know what do you guys think all right uh, I mean because it's all about teaching and training you know training training on one another getting to know your faith and a lot of Christians unfortunately don't know their faith they just been going off of what has been rehearsed to to them out of routine That's right true. So, again, we're talking about is the Great Commission church invitation part two. All right. The difference between, again, evangelism and discipleship. And Carly made a good point how, again, you know, evangelism is killing discipleship. You know, it, it's and and that's why we're not really well equipped or the church is in the state is in because we're not truly discipled. We're not we're not prepared. You know, and. And. I don't want to be in no situation to where, again, with the seven sons of, of Sceva, you know, you coming up against something that's very, uh, you know, deep in ministry. Jesus, I know Paul, I know, but who are you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> OK. And again, that comes through training. We all we all need some training, some discipleship. All right. Man. So. All right. So, again, hey, again, what uh, what, what are y'all comments on this? All right. Uh, again, in, in, or any questions, any questions, any any um tough questions that you wanted to ask okay definitely yeah diallo you, you better really know him and that comes through discipleship that's how you know him is through discipleship okay again spending time fellowship all right be being taught you know because a lot of us are just going out there willy-nilly and we're and we're really powerless <laughs> it's all, uh, i mean we, we we i mean we, we we don't really have the weapons with us because we because we're not trained properly i feel hey william he says i believe that old school baptist church had the sunday school concept right Oops. yes i agree when i grew up there was literally a curriculum yeah i remember that and that went through the scriptures it was separate from sunday yes yes i do remember that even in ame churches and uh yes i remember sunday school was definitely a big impact on my life too as far as me learning little foundational things about jesus and christ you know you had sunday school and then you had vacation bible school you know but they were all geared towards okay. teaching and pouring and indoctrinating you in a good way exactly you know? so yeah I, I i definitely remember those days sitting on the baptist them old wooden long pews with no cushion <laughs> you, know, you got the pews with the cushion and then you got the long pews with no cushion you see what i'm saying we had the one with no cushion in there but well, hey, we had the we cushion hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> thank god <A> red cushion <laughs> <laughs> yes uh all right hey come six please explain luke 14 23 all right yeah yes 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 we will do it again um and, and thank you william for you for your comment as well and and, and anyone else the all right says uh many are drowned by out by improper frequent meditation on who he is and who you are hmm okay uh yeah probably, um if you want to elaborate a little bit more diallo cool or or or, or if y'all understand what, he, what he's saying on that as well too um yeah okay we well, yeah, yeah elaborate a little bit more for us and again it, it, it keep those comments coming and questions coming as well all right as again this is critical dialogue is the topic is the great commission church invitation all right discipleship versus uh uh evangelism so, so i know christian they see the feeling ceiling fans was only when it gets yeah <laughs> it was always hot in church <laughs> definitely yeah <laughs> yes I, May you always pray for a guest speaker to come through because you, you get the best best results, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead, Crawley. Yeah, man. So, yeah, what we do you want us to get into? You want us to get to um, – I go ahead and bring up the clip if you want hey, to do that before you, we man. come back or – Hey, yeah, go ahead and bring up, yeah, bring, bring up the clip. And, um, okay. yeah, come and we'll, get, yeah, we'll get to that scripture. Okay, cool. Okay, well, I, I have it. This, y'all, is a clip that we're about to watch. Um, and again, we're bringing these this clip up and the other clip up because this is the this is a byproduct of us thinking that church should be used for total evangelism, even if we skip over discipleship. Okay, so we, we're going to see this, and this is an Andy Stan Andy Stanley's church. A lot may be familiar with his father, Charles Stanley, who was huge oh, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. You know, he was kind of like a back by the book guy. I can say that I fool with Charles a little bit, but I don't think I need to fool with his son. And I don't think none of y'all do either. Uh, but, but yeah, Andy Stanley, he, he has a church. But anyway, this is a 
a video about a person who recently, uh, a, a transgender who recently got baptized at, at his church. So we're going to see this and check this out. And uh, let me see if I can bring this up here. Give me a second. Hey, how's it going, Sister Hall? Thank you so much for watching. Yes. And everyone else as well, too. Again, um, uh, go keep coming with those comments as well. All right. And, and any questions? Andy Stanley? Different? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I, I've never seen them. I heard them. Hi. I'm 26 years old, and my name is Troy Zapp. For the last 25 years of my life, I was simply going through the motions when it came to growing in my faith and attending church. I was always taught that the Bible was a book of rules and God was the rule master. This brought on a lot of fear when thinking about having a close and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The people in my life that mattered to me the most were the ones to tell me that who I was and who I am today would never be good enough for God to love and accept that for some reason my sins were far worse than theirs and anyone else's. In September of 2014, I had a decision that would completely alter my life and everyone around it, including my friends, family, coworkers, and neighbors. I was lucky to meet up with Elaine Scott and Clay Scroggins of North Point Community Church in order to seek answers on how to get on God's good side and what it took to receive a passing score into his heart. They truly knew that that's not the answers I needed to hear that day, that God loves us no matter what, and that in proof, he sent his only son down to die for our sins, that he would truly love me no matter what. And in that moment and on that day, I truly knew what it felt like to accept Jesus Christ into my heart. For so many years, I thought we had to be this perfect Christian image in order to receive God's love and acceptance. It's a shame that it took me this long to figure out that God's love was already there all along. Even in my life, in the worst struggles, and when I felt like my life was falling apart, he was always there for me as the kind and loving, comforting father that he is. I've been left a few scars in life, but now I know God was with me through them all. I'd like to thank my family, the Stuckey family, and my friends for being here today in support of me. Today, I'm proud to say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. That, that's your mom, isn't it? <laughs> Troy, I think you, your story just says it all. I mean, there is nothing greater or more freeing than knowing that God loves us. God loves you right where you are, exactly as you are. And the, and the confidence that comes from knowing that your life is forever changed because of Jesus. And I am so honored to do your baptism today. And it is based upon your profession of faith that it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute, so what? That was a transgender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whoever did the surgery on that jump was cool. Great. Man, that is scary. Go ahead. Yeah, it is yeah. scary. That was a that was a woman. <laughs> oh my God. But what are y'all, what would y'all first of all, let's get some reactions or some responses oh, to man. what we just saw. Because that is a direct, that is a byproduct of us feeling that the house of the Lord should be one of the biggest evangelistic tools out there and so if that is then we should expect stuff like this to be welcome if that is you know to a certain degree or even if you wouldn't welcome it in your church you could definitely see how there's going to be a fight of reason to be like well if y'all invite any and everybody in why can't any and everybody partake because don't invite me to your house but i can't also but we've been preaching that uh come as you are you know what i'm saying and uh, we have, and, and let me ask a good question about that. And we and we'll go to Chris. We yeah. say come as you are, but I would love for someone to could you show me in the Bible where that is? Nowhere. You got a scripture and verse for that. I <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> hey, just like if you take one step, he'll take two. Uh just said Jesus invited any and everybody in. Yeah, scripture and verse would be pretty good <laughs> if we could talk about it. I mean, but there again, we hear stuff so long and so often 
yeah, yeah. that it becomes true to us and we Dog deem man. it as Bible. Because there's a lot of things I'm like, you know what? When people say that ain't in the Bible, I say, yes, it is. And I go and look for it, I'll be like, you know what? That ain't really in the Bible. <laughs> but but yeah, <laughs> yeah, Chris, you was about to say something. Yeah, I would say, um, I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to what I wrote down first. Um, just in response to the video, first of all, when you talk about God loving us and, and God accepting us, I'll say this God loves us all, but God mm -hmm. does not accept any and everything from us. Uh, that's number one. Secondly, <laughs> uh, on the come as you are thing, I don't I don't think the Bible ex expressly says come as you are, but I think the understanding is uh, you don't have to be perfect to come to God. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't have to try to fix all your mistakes and then come to God. So in that aspect, come as you are, it, it, it does ring true. But the Bible also says uh, <laughs> once you come to be you transformed. I sent you the link. Come on. Be you transformed by, by the renewing of your mind. So there has to be a renewing of the mind. And the third thing that I wanted to say is uh, from the video, my reaction is uh, people need to stop trying to cut deals with God. Like it's like uh, mm. he's he basically like I'm um people want to say I'm transgender, I'm homosexual, I'm a murderer, I'm a this, I'm a that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a dog. I'm a cat. They want to say I'm I'm whatever. And God, if you'll accept me just like this, and 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 I don't have to make any changes, then I'll come to you. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's kind of what I saw in that video. It's like it's like. Uh, somebody done co-signed for them and got them feeling like, okay, they accept me and I don't have, to, I could, I, I don't have to be uncomfortable. I can remain just as I right, am. Will. And so, so on those terms, I'll come and be baptized by in the name of your Lord and savior. And, and it, and it just don't work like that. And people are setting people up for failure by, making them think that uh, God is like Burger King and you can have it your way. You can't have everything. That's what we're seeing. You, you can't good. have, you can't have everything your way. You know what I'm saying? Jesus cannot uh, be Lord and savior without being Lord. It's a, it's a package deal. You know what I'm saying? You want him to be your savior. You got to allow him to be your Lord. It, you know what I'm saying? If, he, if he's responsible for, for taking care of you, uh, just like uh, uh, um, a, a parent, you know what I'm saying? We, we're responsible for taking care of our children. We have authority to tell them what to do because we're also responsible for their safety and well-being and, and so on and so forth. And people want uh, uh, God to be responsible for their safety and for blessing them and meeting all their needs. But don't tell me nothing to do. Don't don't correct right. me. And, and it just don't work like that. Hey, um. And they uh then we got some pushback here a little bit. Uh definitely want to read, read some of the comments and everything. I like what uh, uh Will says. Uh I yeah, also even that they they baptize a transgender person, why interview that person and put it out publicly and uh which again and you they, know what the reason why they would do that is because of what we're talking about tonight. They believe that the thing that we should do is invite the whole world in the church. Yeah. And so yeah. part of the world is the transgender. So that's kind of like a big poster board. It's kind of like a big billboard, if you will. Right. The reason why they did it, because they want to say, hey, all are welcome here. Right. And and so that's the big push. So that's one reason why they would put them up there, interview to put it up before everybody, because they want to let it be known. You are welcome here, despite whatever your condition. I, and I think the rebuttal to that um, come as you are. Uh, I can't I can't think of the verse, but you know that though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. I think it's in Isaiah somewhere or so. And so on um if if y'all if y'all know that scripture or so, but it's like I can see the point from there. It's like, okay, or was Jesus talking to his people who were in sin and and though their sins were as red as scarlet, he'll make them white as snow. Yeah. That's very hey. good, Ron, because I think what we have to do here, we have to deal with a couple of different things. And I think we're talking about two different things when I'm saying in the comments is because, first of all, we, what we have to talk about is 
anybody could come to Christ. Like you don't have to clean yourself. As a matter of fact, you can't clean yourself to come to Christ. It's just that's just, that would just be like, well, I need to take a shower before I take a shower. Uh -huh. Like Jesus is the cleanser. He is the redeemer. He is the one that comes in and fills us and makes us new. We can't make ourselves new. So the only requirement for anybody to go from death to life is a willingness to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. The cleansing don't even start before that. You, we cannot clean ourselves. If so, we wouldn't need Jesus. So I think we all would agree on that. But here's mm -hmm. the thing that's also different we got to talk about. First of all, you can't come to Jesus while still maintaining, here's one thing that is an instantaneous fruit of anybody who wants to who wants Christ. Mm -hmm. If you don't that also is. have a heart of contrition for your wrongdoing, that don't mean you have to completely stop doing it. But if you don't have a heart of contrition towards your wrongdoing, that is instantaneous fruit that you even seeking the Lord in the first place. So if you say, like, like for instance, what, what we just saw, this person didn't have a heart of contrition towards their life, their alternate lifestyle, because they were still embracing the fact that, yeah, I was that, but now address me as a man. Mm. There was no recanting that, hey, I did the biggest smack in God's face while telling him and you all that God made a mistake when he created me this, and now I want y'all to recognize me as this. And guess what? Baptism doesn't save anybody. Right. Baptism is a symbol, and it, and it's and it's kind of like a symbol that of what has happened. It's an outward expression of what has happened on the inside. So if you really have become a new creation on the inside, get this. Even if we want to say it's a it's it's an it's an addiction or whatever the case may be, like I've said and like I teach, like the Bible teach, all sins aren't created equal. So before you're going to come into the house of God and you're going to give off optics to to my babies in the faith and even natural babies. No, no. What you're going to do is you're going to dress like what your gender, what your gender say you are. And if not, you're not ready to come in the house of the Lord where there should right. be a certain respect level. Because and we're going to see in the scripture that I bring up in Corinthians exactly what Apostle Paul is is kind of lending to exactly what I'm explaining right now. So that's one thing we got to understand. We're not saying you have to clean yourself before you become clean. But we're saying once you get clean, you can't right. you can't right. empower practicing to become better or maintaining an evil identity. Hey, what's up? Hey, shout out to um, Madam D, who's on the water in the ocean. Hey, happy oh. birthday to you! Yeah, she said it, yeah, she she she's on vacation and everything on the and sea. Still tuning in. Yes, thank you so much. In in international waters. Hey, let us know if Jesus is walking on the walking on the waves and everything. <laughs> now. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, what's up, Jesus Beats? How you doing, brother? <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? How you brothers doing today? Good, All right, what's up, good. bro? Good to see you. Been a while, been a while. Yes, it has. Yeah. Hey, Jesus beats. Yes. Hey, yeah. he and I had a conversation last week and, and was telling him about what we're talking about, as you see. And so uh, he definitely wanted to join in. And so um uh yeah, hey, um I don't uh, I think you saw the clip where we were showing yeah. the, about the transit. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, um, do you want to say anything concerning that? Just sad. I mean, it's just th this mm -hmm. is the this is what we've seen with the um, I don't know. It's it's almost like if you want to say new church, but it's like these these uh, churches nowadays. Not all, but just these ones right now are just trying to. They're trying to accept everybody because of numbers. It's it's not really about the ministry. It's more about mm. filling the seats. All right. Yeah, it's about the money. It's about the moolah, the cheddar, everything. You know, they the Jesus they gotta, hustle. Yeah, the Jesus hustle, and so it's like, where, where is the salvation at? Where is the accountability? Where is the the uh the discipleship before you start putting somebody in that water you know when you want to baptize them and 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 put them right. where, where, you know, it's, it's like it's just, somebody say like the progressive church it's like okay we got to accept everybody and the sad part about it is like will this person who is claims to be transgender are they going to be changed for the renewing of their mind or are y'all just going to just put them in the audience and then say hey look hey we we, we accepted a transgender Next person is going to be we accepted a, a person who is a pedophile. You know, we're going to accept these. You know, what's the next step? You know, what's the next level? So it's, it's just. I yeah. think I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Jesus. No, you good. You good. You good. I'll yeah, I, I, I was just going to say um, just piggybacking off of what you what you said. Uh, um, my first thought is it's unloving. Like like it's it's unloving to. 
to yeah. uh deceive someone into thinking that they're good that's you know good, what I'm saying? Chris. Wow. like that's why good. would you why would you that's just good. just dunk them in some water and tell them because they went in some water and they came back up that they're straight and they still you know what I'm saying on a path that's that's leading to mm. hell like like that's not that's not love you know what that's saying? enabling right the bible yeah the bible said whom whom the lord loves he corrects you yeah. know what I'm saying? And if we're going to be like the Lord, you know what I'm saying? And 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 there's a part where you do have to build relationships um, to, um, sometimes, um, build some, I'll say build some rapport with people, um, mm -hmm. have some common ground, some things that you, um, you know what I'm saying, can relate to, you know what I'm saying, that's righteous, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but, but you don't just tell them because that's my friend, I'm not going to tell them the truth. Because if because if he if you dump them in that water and then they die <laughs> when they go home, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They they ain't going to the right place. Um, the, the the other thing I wanted to do is respond to the scripture that somebody asked about earlier. Uh, Luke uh, was it Luke 14 and 23? Luke 14, 20, yes, yeah, 14, yeah. 14, yeah. 14. And, it, and it was talking about uh, go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come. And and I think the part that that people um, kind of get thrown off a little bit by is because you said that my house may be filled thinking that he's talking ah. about the church and, and yeah. a lot of times uh i don't even think he's talking about a church building right there he's talking about the kingdom he's talking about invite bring people into the kingdom um jesus didn't even preach himself he preached the kingdom he told you know what i'm saying tell people about about the kingdom, you know, saying um, what the scriptures say. In, in my father's house, oh, there are no, many, many there are many mansions. Many mansions. If, it, if it were not so, I would have told you. So I think it's more so. He's talking about from that aspect of when you come into the family, uh, you you you're now in the house of God. You know what I'm saying? You're now in the family of God, and you get to partake in all the benefits of being in the kingdom. Not so much as come pack my church out. And I think, um, you know, what I'm saying there has to be some clarity there. You know, what I'm saying I'm sure Crawley can break that down um, and, and 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 explain it a lot better. Uh, but but what I get is I don't think he's saying um, go and and make sure you fill the church up. I think he's just saying, you know, what I'm saying bring people to the kingdom. That's what man. Well that's said. What, go ahead. Yeah, that's well said because that's exactly what you did an excellent job. Like that's exactly where I was yeah. going because. What happens is when you look at a biblical parallel and the one like that was brought up, one of the things about a parallel, it is, is, is a parallel is something that it wants you to extrapolate the same principle from the parallel to reality. But that's mm. not saying that, this, that the parallel is exactly like reality. Ah, that's what makes it a parallel. So I get it. And it, what makes it a good question is because it is talking about the parallel portion of it is saying, yeah, invite people into a physical place, just like the grand wedding. And he was like, OK, people too busy to come in, go out in the streets so that we can fill this house. You know, so the parallel is talking about a physical place. But the meaning that is to be extrapolated out of it, I do believe, is exactly what Chris said. But what mm -hmm. God is saying is he's saying in retrospect, go out into the highways and the byways and recruit people to come to his spiritual house, meaning that they will become members of the household of faith, even if they don't step foot in the church building. Mm. That's not saying that they do or don't come to church or go to the church building. That's just saying that because when you think about it, the ultimate motivating factor of Luke 14 is to go out. He said so that my house could be filled with strangers, meaning people who were not family, but can become family. So why do I say that? Even if you look at Luke 14, when you look at Luke 14 and how it ends up in that in that in that section, because what they brought up, the context of that goes from verse 16 down to, to verse 24. And then if you look at it in the Amplified, listen to what, how it finishes up. It says, it says, well, just read a little further. It says, then the master told a servant, go out into the highways and along the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled with guests. But look at what verse 24 says. It says, for I tell you, not one of those who are invited mm -hmm. that, do, that do decline the invitation will taste my dinner. So if you really understand what he's saying is, he was saying anybody who gets evangelized to who would reject the invitation won't ultimately taste 
his goods and we know his ultimate goods is eternal life yeah so you can and we do know that you can get you can get eternal life or you can receive christ in eternal life whether you're in a physical church or not so that it is a good question because the parallel principle the parallel is talking about a physical place but the principle extrapolated from the parallel ends up not talking about something that's physical but is given a principle of evangelizing the people and everybody that you ask that will reject jesus they won't taste the dinner of messiah that being christ so that's what and, and again all that is is just really i'm just piggybacking off what chris white said because right. he explained it in a way that i totally agree with hey the topic is is the great commission church invitation evangelism and discipleship all right uh, again crawley made the point that evangelism is killing discipleship all right what is true discipleship what does that look like and yeah what are your questions what what are your comments all right so it's like simply as we said like in the last show you know simply inviting a sinner to church you know in hopes of them getting saved we pretty much are not that's kind of backwards not kind mm. of it is backwards you know it's that you know we are well equipped to bring somebody to christ out there in the streets and i have to wait to bring them into the four walls so that the pastor can give a good word and they'll and, and that'll touch their hearts all right um and for just for clarity too and you all could respond to this and you know definitely jesus beast and chris white uh because there may be someone just tuning in so when they hear the evangelist the evangelism or evangelistic church is killing the disciple church what mm -hmm. we're meaning by that is saying that churches now have become so focused on getting new people in that they neglect discipling the people and growing the people up that's already there right mm. and so because when you study evangelism when you study the life of jesus he separated mm. evangelistic moments from disciple from pastoral discipling moments and like we said last week and when you go back and look at last week this is why we have to make a distinction between offices and positions of christian leadership because sadly if we all be honest we treat the apostle the prophet the evangelist the pastor and the teacher we treat them all the same in church we reduce them down to just pulpiteers mm. and yeah. so mm. but the thing about it is once we really get the full meaning by, and make a distinction between them all we understand why everybody gets what they need the center as that's going to receive christ as well as the people saved already why because both are necessary but the thing about it is both of them will kill one another if you try to do them at the same time because evangelistic <laughs> messages are different from developmental right. messages yes, mm. both. this is like this is why a pastor is different from an evangelist one is designed to give grant people an invitation to christ that's an evangelist. That's an evangelist. Now, I know traditionally we think an evangelist is a preacher who go around and preach at different churches who don't have a church of their own. <laughs> yeah. That's something yeah. that we've got backwards. That's all. That's not biblical. That's just <laughs> us in tradition. An evangelist, if you let the evangelist do his job, now the pastor don't have to spend so much time trying to replenish the church because that's the evangelist's job. So what is the pastor's job? The pastor's job, if you look at the word pastor, it literally means to develop Mm. not to invite wow. so all mm. i'm saying is both are important but when you have one man trying to do both or when you have one service that you think both is happening one is ne getting neglected if both are not getting neglected hey man that's well said yes mm. hey again any comments that y'all have on this all right feel free this is what critical dialogue is all about here um, us, 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 sister Rose. We, we definitely want to definitely um, go to that scripture, Matthew eleven, twenty-eight and thirty. And, yes. uh, um, Thank y'all so much for your comments. And yes, Ron, uh, did you yeah. want to real quick too go back because I didn't want to overlook Diallo's question. But I, is that a scripture that he put up? Is he trying to say Isaiah one and eight? Yeah, and I, I, I'm thinking. Or I want to get clarification on that because we don't want to overlook that yeah. either. Yeah, no, that's not the correct one, Diallo. I looked. I looked that up. No, that's. Um, Let us know, Diallo, what you were saying. If you're saying that that's a verse of scripture that I guess supports or don't support what we're talking about, we definitely love to discuss. But yeah, okay, so you, do you think babies in Christ should be in the same service as the mature in Christ? Then this is a very. Uh, <laughs> I like this question. This, so before well, I, 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 I would like to hear them. I, I know what my yeah. answer is, but and I'll just say it briefly because I want to hear from the other two panelists. I would just simply say 
that it kind of depends, but ultimately no. And why do I say ultimately no? And it's, and I don't want to say be in the same service. Like any time when you catch them in the same thing, it's mm-hmm. just off, wrong, and bad. Because remember, we're not yeah. pointing the finger here as much as we're talking about what is more wise and what is more effective. Because there are a lot of people who are doing church wrong who who mean well. So we're not pointing the fingers of people. Yeah, you know, we don't know what scripture that is or book that But is. the thing about it is, is that what I would say is, and I will answer that with with an example. Mm-hmm. Why would we Why would we take elementary school kids and put them in the same place of development as high schoolers? Ah, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> hey, that's a well. I think it ties into what um, Sister Rose here. I mentioned about Matthew 11, 28 through 30. It says, Come unto mm-hmm. me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. <laughs> and 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, so yeah. um, that's where I could see where that come as you are or so. Because again, that's Jesus talking as a saint say, hey, that's in the red letters. And he's just saying, again, come unto me. So um I hey, what 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 are y'all thoughts on this? Okay. I mean and then you all and, and Chris and, and, and Jesus speaks, y'all yeah. can also respond to you know what I mentioned right. earlier, and you, you can do both or whichever you feel as far as in your response. And y'all in the comments can do the same thing as well, too. You said that was uh that was Matthew. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew 11, 28. Yeah, Matthew eleven twenty eight. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so so as far as that scripture, um, what I gather from that, um, it's still not saying um, anything specific to um, come to church. You know what I'm saying? You know, when I hear that, you know, what I'm saying from just from a, a, a layman standpoint, it sounds like. Um, for those of you who've been out in the world and and, and sin has beaten you down, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you sick and mm-hmm. if you sick and tired of being sick and tired, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's that's what I gather from that. But that still does not explicitly say, no matter what state you in, um, you know what I'm saying, come join the church, come be a member of the church and, and, uh. and, and things of that nature. So we we have to take the scripture for what it's actually saying and not and not just infer or assume or add to and, or, or just always think that everything is about <coughs> everything is about getting people to come to church and we're not against uh people coming to church right it's just it's just that we're trying to bring some balance and make sure people understand the purpose of everything that they're doing um so that um People can be brought to maturity, and 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 serve the purpose for which they were created. I think you said the key word is maturity. You know, we have to um, the the saints who have been in there for a while. We have to be mature so that we can go out and make other mature disciples. And right. and, and that's what's pretty much lacking in, in, within the church world, or or based upon what we have been taught as well. Yeah, go ahead. And I was going to go back to the one, the, the question about uh, should the babes in Christ and, and mm-hmm. other people be in the church, mm-hmm. sitting in the church at the same time. Um, I'm going to go as far as to say there should probably be a lot of babes sitting in the pew sometime because the, the people who are supposed to be teachers shouldn't be sitting down all the time. You know what ah. I'm saying? Like, like they should have they should have already graduated. That's you know what I'm saying? Part. They should be at a uh, they should be at a level to where they ain't just sitting there getting fat off scripture, and that's part of the problem <laughs> with the balance too. You have those who that's it. who who have been in spiritual kindergarten for 50 years, you know. There you go. And then there you, you sit somebody that's really supposed to be in kindergarten beside them. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you're going to have some 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 com- right. confusion. You know what I'm saying here. Uh, um, you know, from from that aspect, but then there are also um, um, points where point. Jesus um, Jesus would take his disciples and pull them away from everybody else and give them, you know, what I'm saying specialized training. You I, know, what I'm saying so. Well, here's a good here's a good question go to you, uh, mm-hmm. 
as well it says but when the pastor keeps teaching elementary subjects or things that will only benefit the church building it keeps all the students at one level so no one will be able to graduate how are the people being developed if the students can if the students stay who's at fault is it is in that manipulation that's a very good yeah, point yeah, that's good that's a good that's a good question there yeah. and, and and i kind of was like in that situation growing up uh, um i grew up in pentecostal uh on mm -hmm. the pentecostal teaching so i was always in that elementary state of you know just hearing a lot of preaching not teaching it was like you know they'll they'll recite the verse you know the stuff you know I won't be before you that long and all of a sudden <laughs> you know they go right into they start with a little bit of just a little teeny bit of teaching right and you're like yeah yeah and then all of a sudden they go to the to you know the ritual of preaching you know and we all know the hook the holler and everything you know, heavy <laughs> breathing yeah yeah so um but for me because i i kind of i strayed away from church as a teenager from one of the teenager level, I was going to church, but then after I, um, I got, you know, I went to the military and stuff. I just kind of strayed away from church until it was until I'm um, um, back in 2006 when I actually got saved from another person and got discipleship with them. So I started going to, I was, I was asking God to give to to show to deliver me to a church that's faith based, Bible teaching in accordance to Scripture, um, in context of Scripture, and it's a biblical life living application of of what they're teaching and so god led me to the church and sometimes there's people that's you know like like that question that somebody just asked a few minutes ago if, you, if you're in that church and you're only getting milk you've been getting milk for almost three or four years then you have to ask yourself why are you still attending something that you're only getting you know the, and have you ever even talked to the pastor you know have you add, you know, got to, if you can't talk to your pastor and even ask him the question about that, then that's not a ministry that you, I, don't, I, don't, I believe that you don't need to be a part of anymore. Not saying you go and run and find something else, but just you got to challenge your pastor. If, if, if your pastor doesn't let you challenge them or even ask questions and they don't want you to ask questions, that's not a church that you're going to grow from. So uh, for me, you know, my pastor, I'm always able to come, come in there and ask questions, you know, pull up scriptures and, and say, look, this is what I don't understand. Very and then I'm, and, then, and I'm able to we're able to have the dialogue and not just with my pastor but my minister I got a minister you got a minister in there I got several ministers I got deacons so you know the men of God I have that in my church where I can able to ask questions and even if you know like sometimes you know they might have their own interpretations but I'm also able to go ask other pastors outside of other churches and uh and that's a great thing also because it's like I don't have to sit there and schedule an appointment to go meet with some pastor I don't have to go up there and wait two or three days. Not if they're busy, you know, I understand, but like, you know, that's the thing. So yeah, that that is the that that question is a really great question because a lot of us, a lot of people are in the church where they're just getting that milk. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Ron, and Ron, the reason why this is a good question is because the essence of this embody the problem of why we're talking about this subject. Because think about it. When we when you when you have evangelistic messages which are only designed to invite to christ and developmental messages are designed to grow in christ so get this if you have all these people in one same service and they all get the same thing guess what either one or two things are happening right, either there are some people in there that's choking on the meat because they only read it for milk as babies or there's mm -hmm. people in there who are being spiritually malnourished because they have been ready for meat but you're only giving them, them the milk of inviting people to, to Christ. It's like, bro, we are already to Christ. So that's why if you, you can, when you focus on one or the other, in order to focus on them both, you have to separate them, which is what <coughs> Jesus did. And he, he embodied that. So that's why I love that question because it's, and it's, and I don't want to, some of the blame, really most of the blame is on the system that we never look at. Cause a lot of times we point the finger at the leaders and then sometimes we point the finger at the members saying they don't want it. And we say the leaders are too manipulative and all you want is your money. But we never look at the unseen reality of the system of church. Right. Because therein holds, that is what normalized our ineffective practices. Mm -hmm. And so if we change our methodology, because if you think about it, it's designed just like an auditorium. Somebody's coming in to put on a show. The difference between your church sanctuary and the movie theater is that there's a pulpit versus a screen. 
but yeah. it's all designed for That's you to good. watch a presentation and not to be a part of something where you grow and develop. And so if we don't change our, our it's all in our method. That what, I, what my goal is to try to get us to re-examine our methodology and be like, yeah, that ain't as effective. And we definitely don't see as much biblical pedigree for it as we can. And now I do want to marry that with the question that Common Sense brought up. Um, well, the one, no, not, I'm sorry. Well, the, the comment that Diallo made before that, I'm sorry, Ron. God uh-huh. won't force it down your throat because here's one of the things too I want to make mention. God won't force it down your throat. He, and it says, even ask God to put the desire in you. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, the pastor can't save you. Jesus can. Here's what I want to say to that. We do know Jesus saved and pastors can't save. But here's the yeah. thing we also do know. We can't get around what God says is going to grow you. If God says in Ephesians 4 that he uh, set these type of people to grow and mature you in me, then guess yeah. what? We, we can't come up with alternatives to grow yeah. in God. <laughs> so the Bible says, how can how can you hear except through a preacher? Pre- preacher. How can he preach unless he be sent? Right. Like, so God has things, and what we're not saying here, though we're pointing out the flaws of church, and Ron, you know, we got a subject coming up where we're yeah. talking about, where well, we're going to be talking about the church as far as why do we still need the church even though it's flawed? All the I think great we're things do about that the church. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to do a yeah. show on that because a lot of people need to know just because you can point out wrong about something and flaws about something don't mean that that gives you enough reason to separate from it. No, because God mm. still loves his bride and we're going to have a whole show it. dedicated to that. But mm. what now what we're trying to do is our goal is to help the bride be more effective, not to give you more reasons to leave and to say you don't need it. Come on now. That was <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I just want to uh, respond to um, what was that somebody said earlier uh, about uh, what if um, the, all they're teaching is milk, or all, all they all they're getting is milk. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I just want to bring some balance to 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 that uh, because there are a lot of people I, I've heard that a lot over the years. A lot of people are like um, I ain't being fed. Or they, you know, saying I'm not being taught. <clears throat> there's some people that may be true, but then there's some people that they're not being obedient to the little bit of scripture that is being taught, you know. And so, so you have to be mindful of that and make sure that you're not part. I'm not speaking to this person that, that posed the question per se, but right. but in general, um, we have to make sure that that we're not a part of the problem. The reason why things aren't going the way that they are, because um, there's, you know, what I'm saying you don't. Um, uh, um, the kingdom of God is not like public school. They're not gonna just push you along because you got too tall, or or too old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you if you if you want to stay ignorant, you'll you'll stay at that same you'll stay at that same level. Um, you know what I'm saying? Until you go go through what you have to go through to grow. <clears throat> you know. And, and so there are some That's people, good. they're just not being taught. Uh, some people are the victim of uh, what we've been discussing here. Sometimes there, there, there's systematic stuff in place, traditions of man and so on and so forth that, that hold people back. And then there are some people who um, are just, you know, saying really not being obedient to the word that they do know. And, and the other thing I would say is that if you're at a place and you feel like you're not being fed, um, I heard somebody say, you know, saying they took prayer out of schools, but but just because they took prayer out of school don't mean they could take prayer out of your home, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 and just because out of, your, out of your heart while you're in school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Out of your yeah. heart while you're in school. They can't they can't they can't they don't know that what you praying inwardly. You ain't got to pray out loud and make a spectacle. You can still pray. And and uh, and the same way with with uh, with the things that, as far as church, um, if if you're not being fed. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody stop you from digging in that Bible on your own. You know what I'm saying? And and that may be uh, um, the key to you getting the guidance that you need to, to see where you need to go from, from there. You know what I'm saying? If you dig in that scripture long enough, uh, the Lord is either going to lead you to talk right. to your pastor and, 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 and you know what I'm saying, and, and get some clarity about some things, or the Lord is going to move you out of there because that place ain't good for you. But but you'll right. never know what to do right. if you ain't spending time in the word, if you ain't spending time in prayer, if you ain't talking to the Lord yourself. Hey, man, this is well said. All right. Um, hey, again, we're talking about is the Great Commission. 
church invitation part two all right keep those comments and questions coming on all right because you help all help this now we want to go to this question here with common sense says it says if everybody is okay to be in the same service with every believer then why did those in the corinth church write paul about the fornicator and why did paul ask them to put <laughs> him out very good very this good is, question. Now, this is why i'm laughing at this and you know what just because of this question or comment i'm going to rearrange because i was going to show the next clip and then i was going to get to my verse of scripture that we were supposed to get to last week guess what verse of scripture that happened to be that one the right exact right. one that they are referencing right now in first wow. Corinthians <laughs> chapter five this is why this is a wild moment because what they're bringing up and what they reference is the exact go-to scripture that i want us to go through to see why we don't need to embrace what has been normalized in church so what we do let's just go because you brought it up let's go to that scripture and see what it mm -hmm. says and pick out some things about that so thank you so much common thank sense you. for bringing that reference up because that's not only one of my go-to's that i show people hey there's a perfect example of why any and everybody shouldn't be invited in church and and should be allowed to stay within the household of faith there's some people you got to kick out and you and their very presence threatens and disrupts the spiritual well-being of the service of the household of faith of the group of the ecclesia the group of believers so, so thank you. you so much we're gonna yeah. bring it up right yeah now. yeah, yeah, go, up. Ahead. yeah, yeah go ahead bring it up and um did you want to show that video too as well yeah so you want okay. so we can you want i can show the video towards the end being that they brought the question up yeah now. they're going yeah, to do, do that it. so because this may take this may take a little because I want us to see this. It's going to be something in this verse of scripture that most never really pay attention to that I think yeah. is fascinating, but it really brings our point home. So um, here it is. It should pop up here in a little bit. OK, so this is what it is in the context of this. Here it is. Apostle Paul is addressing the church. Now, this ain't out. This ain't the club. This ain't this is the church that he's addressing. And so what has happened is there has been a guy who has. Um, has been committing sexual immorality with his own with his father's woman right and so look at what paul says to do with this church and i want us to pay attention to some choice words and this is in the amplified version but if you look here he said it has been reported um everywhere that there is sexual immorality among you a kind of immorality that is e that is condemned even amongst the unbelieving gentiles that someone has an intimate relationship with his father's wife and you are proud and arrogant. You should have mourned and shame so that the man who has done this disgraceful thing would be what? Uh oh, kicked out of the fellowship, mm. not allowed to stay, not allowed to be. So this definitely disrupts the crowd that truly do believe any and everybody should be in church. Church should turn nobody away. Apostle Paul don't believe that. And so look at what he says. He says, for the, for I, though absent from you in body, but present in spirit, have already what? Passed judgment. There's that word that we say is a no-no, and we don't understand judgment is good. Judgment is not, we don't always look at it in a, in a positive light like we should. He says, I've already ju passed judgment on him who has committed this act as if I were present. He says, in the name of our Lord Jesus, when you are assembled and I am with you in spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to what? Hand this man over to, to Satan, Satan for the destruction of his body so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Saints, here's what we're witnessing in this context. Kicking people out sometimes is good for their salvation mm. or it could bring them salvation because if mm. we never kick people out, this, uh, there's never a strong enough signal that goes off to say, hey, something is really wrong with my life that needs to be corrected or redeemed. Now look at what he says right here. You are boasting over the supposed spirituality of your church. It is not good. Indeed, it is vulgar and inappropriate. Do you not know that just a little leaven, meaning a little bit of the wrong association, could corrupt the bigger association of the saints so wow. i want to start right there and just get our response to that for one and that is definitely part of the question that was brought <laughs> up and then i'll bring it back to really pay attention to some things and be like yeah man we do need to change our mindset but so this is talking about a person who habitually or is known for doing a certain type of sin not someone who may just up and slip every now and then 
or so, or you, you, you all feel, you all feel what I'm saying again, someone that's known, Oh yeah, man, he's a liar. Oh yeah, man. He's a, or she, he or she is a fornicator or they're drunkard or such, such and such. They know known by their lifestyle. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm asking the question. Any, I, I, anybody want to answer that as well? It said, I grew up in church when people was sat down for sin and rebellion. Even that isn't done now. Instead, sin has right. popped up and put on display. Good. Hey. 100% right. And that's mm -hmm. what's problematic because think about this, you all. The more that we stop punishing sin, get this, even in front of the church, I know we're not going to like this, <laughs> but it's the Bible. Because you remember, Paul also instructs. He was like, look, he says, when an elder get off, when this type of person get off, he says, bring them before the church and rebuke them in front of the church and why did he say that he says openly. because if you do that openly in front of the church guess what it's going to do to the church it's going to strike fear in them to a healthy fear that they know that they don't need to play around with sin oh yeah. my goodness mm. that's the, that's in the book mm. that ain't nothing we making up that's in the book i, I just want to say, say i just want to say a couple of things man um as we was talking about this, you know, saying I, I, I'm just going to give a natural example. Um, we want I, when I say we, I don't mean we, but. People want um, the church to just accept anything um, and, and have a, a anything goes mentality, but it doesn't work like that anywhere else in society. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to give you an example. Mm. I was in the military for 25 years. Okay. Jesus Beats was Marine, I believe, right? Yes, or, or, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so he was in the military. Now I also served as a recruiter. And and knowing that, um, there were things that where you couldn't even join if you had certain disqualifications. Like you couldn't even become a member. Period. Then there are also things that you could do that um could prevent you from getting promoted and so on and so forth. There are things that you could do that could get you discharged. There are yeah. things that can get you discharged temporarily. There are things that can get you discharged and you could come back with an exception of policy, which, which we would call a waiver. And then there are sometimes there are some things you can do and you ain't never allowed to come back and, and you get paperwork to say um, your discharge paperwork to say this joker can't ever <laughs> set foot in Uncle Sam's military ever again. <laughs> and so... So, God, so, 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 so we, we're good with that for the military. We're yeah. good with that for McDonald's and Burger King and, and DuPont and whoever else. But when it comes right. to the kingdom, we're supposed to lower all our standards and throw all the standards out mm. the door and, and, and make uh, amends or modifications for people mm -hmm. so they can feel good. And if we don't do that, we're not loving folk. loving government you know what Chris, you know what that's no. like you know what that's like real quick that's mm -hmm. just like that's just like the bentley dealership you know bentley or rolls royce they're very expensive cars i mean yeah. you like know vehicle. half a million dollars three hundred thousand dollars for one car that's mm -hmm. just like that you we expecting the church nowadays to do this that's just like the bentley dealership saying you know what because the common man can't afford our cars, we are going to lower the price to thirty nine. Nah. Right, right. <laughs> Good example. Like, no. <laughs> like we're going to keep the price where it is because we know what's in that vehicle. We know even down to the seats and even the the stitching structure and and how they're handmade and stuff like this. It's like no, we're not going to raise our prices so that everybody can afford it. We're going to maintain the standard and, and, and challenge you that, hey, if you want a Bentley, see yourself being more productive financially, get a job, ah. do whatever and save, and then you can get one. But we're not going to lower the price of a Bentley down to $30,000 mm -hmm. because That's we weird. don't want to hurt nobody's feelings when they Very walk good. in the door. And, and, that, and that leads back to, to what Crawley said earlier, how it's sometimes a good thing to put people out. Not that we want anybody to be out. Right. But the thing about it is... Uh, um, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Anything, my grandma always taught, taught uh, anything that come easy ain't worth having. And anything that's worth having ain't going to come easy, you know? And and, and so, um, so a lot of times, because we lower the par and tell people, oh, 
we'll take anybody, we'll take anything. They don't even respect the church. But if we raise that standard mm. and say the standard is the standard is the standard, they'll be like, can you right. please let me be a part of your fellowship? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a psychological piece to that. Wow. And well, even man, if, like, hey. even when you look at fraternities and sororities, man. the reason why, listen, people will stop fighting to be in fraternities and sororities today if they lowered the standard and didn't have any method of like, hey, they'd be like, you know what? Anybody could join. The fact mm -hmm. that they even hold some type of standard, even if it's crazy and wicked, for you to get in there, it's appealing to people. And we don't never, we say that the world looks at the church like it's a joke, and they do, but we never ask why. One of the reasons is the church lowers the standard and just is accepting of anything. So guess what? Wow. I don't That's feel good. as special if I'm a part of a club that anybody could be a member of. That's good. <laughs> That's you good. Know, yeah, go you, ahead. You, 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 and, and just even to add on to that, the, the, the churches that are doing this, it's, it's almost like they, they they accept people mainly because of the skills and talents that they have that they look into them. There it is. Mm -hmm. Think think about this. There it is. So some of the churches, not all, but a lot of these physical physical buildings of the churches today are actually like amusement parks. They have a lot of amenities. You know, the bigger the church that the the, the, the more money more money that comes in, they add on a lot of amenities for the church. Like there's churches that have a Starbucks in there. Uh, there's churches that might have a coffee shop. Yeah. But, you know, uh, they <laughs> have a daycare. They have a lot. You know, a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people today are window shoppers, window church shoppers. You know, we're looking for the most perfect church to appease our flesh when it comes to the amenities. Oh, they got a great youth program. So I'm my child, in. and there's nothing bad about that. Uh, or I, I I like the praise and worship team. They got. I'm the, saying they, that's the biggest draw, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, praise, the praise and worship. It's it's music. Music is like after music stops, everybody turns like to robots. They don't know what to do after that. But it's just like they <laughs> they are attracted like roaches to the bait. You know, like the raid. You know, you put that little roach trap house <laughs> in there, and all of a sudden you got the little pellets and the roaches go over there and get there, and then they take it back to the nest and like, oh raid. You know, just but it does. <laughs> But that's how most, you know, not seeing everybody. It's just that there are a lot of people out there who are looking for that. And so when they, so the, the church is willing to lower, a lot of churches are willing to lower the standards of what they stand behind on the bylaws that they wrote, that they, they have been written many years at the, that the church has stand on. So they're willing to overlook the fact that I know that this young guy, Randy, Randy is one of the best guys when it comes to sound. Randy is the best engineer. He knows how to run my soundboard. I bought a multi-million dollar sound program and I need Randy to run it. And Randy smokes cigarettes. Randy likes to get drunk after church. Randy likes to go up there and go to the strip club. But because Randy is one of the best people to run that sound and run uh -oh. quiet wires and cables all over the place, we're willing to overlook that. Then you got Jamal. Jamal is one of the best praise and worship <laughs> directors ever. He can lead a choir to the to the to the top of the moon. You know what I'm saying? He's got awards and accolades. He can make you sing from your diaphragm like you have never seen before. And he's willing to make that praise and worship team and that gospel uh, group to sound great. But Rand, but 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 Jamal likes men, and Jamal likes to 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 sleep around with young men. You know what I'm saying? Well, and he's got an addiction. And but hmm. because but because. Jamal is really great at what he does. We're going to give a bypass on that and allow him to direct our choir and to, mm -hmm. and, to and, and which could, which can also groom <laughs> groom other men, young boys. Uh, mm. He's got he's got the smorgasbord now. He's like he's got a whole <laughs> plate full. Oh, you know, uh -oh. and, and, and and even though they sound like powerful, you know they sound like the Georgia Mass Choir back in the day, but. You know, we know the rest of the system, but it's just like that's what I've seen. Not all churches that's doing this, but it's just like we see it right now where, where we're seeing that a lot of the amenities that these churches are offering, the, 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 the leaders and the elders and everybody that's in the church is willing to give a free pass to those who are who have the skills and the talents and the trades to come into the church. And we're willing to make a barter deal with them. Well, what about uh man? Well, well, well said. Hey, so so can Saul of Tarsus be a member? Mm -hmm. uh, right, and uh, and uh, I would venture to probably say no, you know, because mm -hmm. 
because Saul of Tarsus is not saved. And uh, but but um, Paul is. And, there was uh, a <laughs> right. There was a transformation. <laughs> transformation. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know what? This is what this is what we would say. Yeah. Uh, hey, Pastor Paul Barry. of Tarsus could become a member, but once uh -huh. he become a member, he would no longer be. Saul of Tarsus. Tarsus, right? You see what I'm saying? And that's the thing, even that when we looked at the video, there was a maintaining of someone being an abomination before the Lord. And look, they say the Lord still loves me. Yeah, but God's love, like I not only speak about in my book, but that I also teach God love doesn't yes, guarantee eternal or earthly safety. Because mm -hmm. God loves everybody He created, but He's not the father of everybody He created. Yeah, exactly. That's what it says. Exactly. Now, so what about this question here? Barry says, um, but don't you think if we focus on teaching and pushing the body about being righteous instead of teaching how not to sin? Well, I would say that's both. I, I would say, how can you do one without the other? Like that's included yeah. in that. Me, like when, me, you, me, when me. you're teaching people on how to maintain conduct, think about any club, think about any office, think about any job. Yeah. Part of teaching you the code of conduct is like, hey, now y'all can't do this because we won't tolerate this. So there's rules and regulations in place to help teach on righteousness. Now, here's what I will say. A byproduct of being able to teach more effectively on it is the first of all, getting people, first of all, making sure that people are truly regenerated and got the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times what we do in church, because there's not a lot of discernment or interaction, we are trying to get sinners to, to put sin on Paul's and to and, and then what we're looking to do is teach behavior modification instead of true mm -hmm. spiritual regeneration. Regeneration on Paul. And so that's what so what happened is if you have somebody that's truly regenerated, now they got the Holy Spirit within this inside, and all we do is water that seed and show them how to water that seed, and then they'll be open more effectively to being taught on being right, the righteousness of God, and having a holier conduct as well as dress code and all that type of stuff. So I would definitely say that, yeah, that's definitely a part, you know what I'm saying, of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the Holy Spirit does does convict, you know, and he's the one that's going to um, change their heart, you know, but as long as we keep giving the word. And he convicts heart. through us. That's mm -hmm. the thing that we don't leave. See, here's the thing about God and even the Holy Spirit. He does things just like, just like evil spirits. The Holy Spirit does things in the earth realm through the limbs of righteous people. So mm -hmm. it, so we can't say that God and the Holy Spirit isn't doing it if he's doing it, if he's using an individual to do it. We still don't give that individual credit. We give God and the Holy Spirit empowering them to do those things because Amen. like the Bible, that's why the Bible says you can't hear without a physical preacher who has physical right. lips. So it does take people to do it, but it is hey, God going through them. Hey, Chris, go ahead and answer, and then we want to go back to Barry's rebuttal here. Go ahead. Okay, I saw that, but what could you put up his first question again? Um, sure. No, no, not Barry, but it was um, one before him. They asked the question. Uh -oh. um, uh, what was yeah, it? Yeah, was it? Um, Doc, I wanted to respond to that question, but I forgot it. All right, was it the Saul of Tarsus? Um, no, it was one after that. Was it? It wasn't common sense. No, no, we already talked about that one, so that's... Um, yeah um you put it up about two uh posts ago what do you think about focusing on teaching pushing the body about being righteous yeah 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 okay. that's the one yeah that's yeah <coughs> okay yeah. that one right there yeah let me see it okay <clears throat> yeah i just wanted to say um we we do that but um the the topic for tonight is just that's just not the focus um and and but we we're not just beating people down for sin um and not um you know trying to build people up but part of the problem is you have a lot of people that they they never get both sides of the coin so so it's just what happened that tonight you know what I'm saying we we're we are focusing on the on on the, the other side of the coin uh but but we don't disagree with you about you know saying um uh, focusing on the kingdom and and you know saying and, and um you know saying getting people to live yeah. righteous we, we don't we don't disagree with that it's just tonight is it's just a different topic yeah we're talking about is the great commission church invitation between evangelism and discipleship 
All right. And again, you know, there's a, a total difference. And we've been basically you've been taught how, hey, bring people to church and, and let the word of God through the preacher convict them and they'll get saved when yeah. we could do that outside of the church before and they also, come. And, and also, I just want to add to that. People ain't going to stop sinning just because we ignore it either. You know, so. That's correct. Exactly. So, so, so that's the thing. Like we're we're addressing stuff that sometimes get gets ignored. And um and 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 it's great that people are able to tune in and and post questions yeah. and, and be a part of the dialogue. And now, you know and and real quick too to go along yeah. with that, they was like instead of teaching how not to sin. Here's one thing that I here's one thing that I measure myself if I'm if I'm doing what's right or wrong. If I can see an example of what I'm doing in the Bible, see. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing: it's not bad to teach people on how not to sin because Jesus did it. You remember when he said, don't do this and this and this. He says, do this and that and don't do this so that you won't sin. So that you won't what? Fulfill the lust thereof. There's The Bible is filled of Jesus mm -hmm. and even Paul teaching on how not to sin. So therefore, it makes it not a bad thing at all to do. Whether it makes us feel yucky or makes someone feel embarrassed, it's a good thing to do because Jesus did it, Paul did it, and the Bible mentions it in a positive light. And, and also, and also, uh, just to piggyback off of what Carly just said, the reason why we even have to have this discussion is because of like the video that was played and, and how people are being taught that sin is good. You know, and 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 mm -hmm. and the Bible says something like, "Woe unto him who who tell people that 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 good is bad and that, and that bad is good." You know, what I'm saying and and woe means, you know, what I'm saying stop, put an end to that person. You know, what I'm saying, and so we we um we have to be accountable uh, to God for what He's given us, and He He commissioned us to right. to tell right. the truth and and confront people when need be. Barry, I wish you could have got on, got on with us because you got some great, um, interesting comments and questions and everything. Rebuttals, thank you so and this much will help. Thank um, you so much. Yeah, thank you things, so much. You know, so um, yeah. Uh, hey, um, Crawley, you want to go ahead and show that other video? Yeah. You know, what so we we'll do? What we we'll do real quick because this is more important than the video. I know we got a couple minutes mm -hmm. left. Is to go back because here's one thing that I want us just to be honest. Have we noticed this before in the scriptures that we just read? So let me bring that back up. Um, really quick here because here's what i want us to notice and it really gives a, a a real good foundation to why we even need to share this topic because the scripture is forbidding something that we have adored thanks good uh-huh so when we look here look at what pay attention to these words and i want us to ask why do we think the apostle paul said this because this is going with the same context. He, he mentioned what happened. He said there's sexual immorality among you. He said a kind is even condemned amongst the unbelieving Gentiles. That someone has did this. He showed what they did. Pay attention to verse 2. He says, and you, now he's not talking at the perpetrator. He's talking about the people who allow it in church. He says, and you are proud and arrogant. He says, but you should have mourned and shame so that the man who is doing this would no longer be in the fellowship. Pay attention to that and then pay attention to this. Verse 6, because he kind of gives the same sentiments here. Look at what he says in verse 6. He says, you're boasting over the supposed spirituality of your church is not good. Indeed, it is, it is vulgar and inappropriate. Guys, he's talking to the church here, not the perpetrator. Now, why would he feel a need to say this to turn and say this to the church. Why do you think he had a need to say that to the church? Because if we really look at what's going on here, he's condemning the thing that we have been calling wisdom. Ah, mm -hmm. ah. Uh, uh, so, so think about it, y'all. The average uh, church now calls it, we are just more mature and more wise. He who went if souls is wise, right? We are more wise than you all because when you come to our church, you can find all types of sinners and people like this in our midst. So we stick our chest out saying that we know we got a, we got more. We got something on the Holy Spirit that you all don't because y'all just immature in that. Because when we come to y'all church, y'all don't see we don't see this type of sinner in it. 
So look at what Paul says to that church. He says, you all should be in shame about the thing that you are sticking your chest out about. Wow. We got to let that marinate for a moment because there ain't too many church. There's a lot of churches out there that this type of mindset is infested would be like, look, no, we invite sinners in. We invite people of all manner of, of sins in. And this shows that we are more righteous than you or that we're more mature and wise than you as a church. But Paul would say to that, you're boasting over your, look at what he says, your supposed spirituality about your church or of your church is not good and inappropriate. And when you go to verse two, he says, and you are prouder and arrogant about the thing that you should mourn over. Mm -hmm. We should be in mourning when sinners and people of all amount of wickedness and evil that they don't want to recant about can still sit comfortably in our churches and still want to come back Sunday after Sunday and we don't touch them, deal with them or say, listen, this is setting off a bad example to the flock. Change your life or either be contrite about your sins or leave. Mm. Oh, mm. my goodness. Is this not a foreign teaching? Matter of fact, I want to ask y'all, be honest. When have you ever even heard or even paid attention to those simple words of Paul and say, why did he say that to the church? Because mm. he won't talk to the sinner then. He was talking to the people, the leaders of the church who had the authority to, to throw this guy out, but chose to let him remain in the church. Man. <laughs> hey, That's what the, say you? <laughs> what do y'all say out there? <laughs> what, do you, what do you say? Is, is that not, is it, is the interpretation? <laughs> is that not what he's saying? Like, what do y'all say to that? I want to get some responses because I know that ain't talk. Yeah. Hey, hey, again, those in the comment section, feel, hey, this is critical dialogue. I mean, this is this is some deep Bible study right here. Hey, while 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 they're uh, posing posting their comments, I, I just want to add this, Ron, if I can. Um, Go ahead. The you know, just getting back to the basics, uh, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The the wages the repayment for sin is death. You know what I'm saying? Let yeah. that sizzle in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? If you sin, it's going to separate you from God. Which, which that's that's what death is. It ain't just talking about your heart stop beating. It means it separates you from from God. You know what I'm saying? That's what sin does. John three sixteen, uh, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, uh, being delivered from sin, or Jesus died. I'll say it this way: the wages of sin is death. Jesus died so we wouldn't have to die and be separated from God. And and, and just meditate on that part. All right. And now yeah. I must lastly I want to say this. Jesus died so that we could be free from sin, not free to sin. And if you really understand what Jesus did for you, you know what I'm saying? Then, then that's what will make you not want to sin because if somebody lay down their whole life for you to free you from something why would you want to continue to waddle in it and and so so because of what jesus did and because we know the benefits of what he did and because we don't want people to suffer death and destruction this is why we have to teach them the truth and, and that jesus so died to free them from sin not so they could be free to sin so let's ask this question here. So at what point or who decides that the one in sin should be put out? And and do we hold up the entire church body on a Sunday morning service to address one? I'm curious. Now, I have seen this done. I was in the church and and and, and yeah, um, I was part of a, a 4000 member church. And yeah, he put them out. He, he put this person out because of sexual sin. Yeah, I've seen this happen, but yeah, go ahead. So who wants to answer this question? Jesus Beast, did you want to have anything to say before we before we go? Let's see. Um, put him out. No, just uh, no, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, 
Yeah, so what point? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm just, okay. Okay. <laughs> you. Okay. Uh, so at what point uh, or who decides that one in sin should be put out? And do we hold up the entire church body on a Sunday morning service to address one? I Like I said, I'm, I'm with Ron. Um, I've seen it before. Um, I mm -hmm. Do I agree with it? No, but is it biblical? Yes. If it, if the word is saying that we have to do that, then it's, it is. But, um, I, I'm, I'm, but it's it's up to the pastor, you know, of that of that church ministry yeah. to make that that make that decision. You know, the pastor would have to make that decision because if you think about it, it's 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 just almost like a cancer. You know, cancer. You don't you don't uh, you're not you're not nice to cancer. Cancer is is it it. it it damages the body. It, it destroys. It wants to destroy everything. So what you have to do, you have to cut it out. And um, for a person who has been either this person who's been a habitual sinner of what they've been doing in the church that is that can be detrimental to your congregation, then it, it's it's needed. The, the, I mean, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying that. Um, do do I, do I agree with everything that it, when it does that? No, no, I don't agree with it. Like a, like a pastor, I believe that some things should be done. In private, but hey, if it's done through what the scripture is saying, then I'm not going to argue against it. I'm not going to kick against it. So that's and that's what our mindset should be. Yeah, what you got, Chris? No, I was just going to say, and I see where the, somebody was commenting because it, it did seem kind of confusing that w with what Jesus be said, it's kind of like you. It sounded like you were saying, "I don't know if I agree with it," but if the Bible say, but I say, if the Bible says it, I have to agree with it. And and to answer yeah, the question. Yeah. Uh, how, how, who should do it and how should it be done? We follow the example of the scriptures, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, and, 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 and when you could go to the scriptures and he said, if they did this, they got to go. And this is how you do it. And, and, and the Bible also extends grace for a lot of these things, because it says if, if somebody is, is out of order, you know what I'm saying? You'll go to them directly. And if they don't respond to that, then you take them to to a group of a group of brothers witnesses. or elders and, right. and some witnesses and if they won't listen to them then it says you blast you them in front of in front of, in front of the whole church and embarrass them if you have to but it don't just go all the way up to step five it's like people are given a chance and when and right. when yeah. they continue to 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 not take those chances you know what I'm saying you got to cut you got to cut that cancer out yeah and that's and and one of the things and real quick I do want to disagree with Diallo's comment when it says let thugs reach thugs because preachers can't because they can't relate. Here's one thing we got to understand about Christianity. The reason why I disagree with this and the Bible would disagree with this is simply for this reason. You don't have to relate to be able to bring someone to a saving knowledge of Christ because you don't have to know and have done the experience because the Bible says a person is not drawn by the ability to be able to relate to someone else's testimony. They are drawn by the spirit of God. Mm, it is. Yeah, it so is. not by our ability to relate. I'm not saying the ability to relate don't add an extra cushion. That's good if you can find somebody that can relate as well, but it's not needed or necessary for salvation. So a preacher, so guess what? I don't have to have been in the whorehouse or card house. I don't ever have to have been a drink, addicted God. or bound by, by drugs or alcohol to be able to bring an addict to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the ability right. to relate doesn't limit anybody because you got to understand this is a Good. supernatural walk and it's not the works of flesh. It is a working mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. And anybody who is a carrier of that spirit at any moment in time can do something that's supernatural as leads someone that they don't know or can't relate to, to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I wanted to really, I wanted to make that because I know we I wanted to hit it and quit it because also too, they kind yeah. of pick it back off that because I know we're going to go. She, yeah. They said, that, okay, now who does it? And here's what I, here's what I like what Chris White said, because first of all, can we determine that the Bible says it needs to be done? Because what we're doing is when we don't like something or when we hear something that's foreign to us, we're yeah. trying, because of our dissonance, we're trying to find reasons to fight against it. Exactly. Like, well, I can't see us getting there. Well, just because you can't see us getting there don't mean it don't need to happen if we can find a biblical reason why it does. Secondly, it is this. Going back to what Chris brought up, his example about the army and about armed forces and about rank. 
This is the reason why it is dangerous for us to believe in a Christianity the way we're left to our own understanding. The reason why God gave us leaders is for the safety of the body. So get this, because of the Holy Spirit and leadership, your leadership, if they are led by the Holy Spirit, should have enough direction to know what to do in every situation because it's not a blanket, just like what Chris said, with every situation. Not only that, you also got to determine, are we dealing with someone who's struggling that, that are fighting against the struggle or fighting to embrace the struggle and say, no, nah, this is who I am and the church need to deal with because those are two different types of people, even though they may be struggling with the same sin. So therefore, the re but here's the thing, we don't have to figure it all out if we just do the ways of faith like that is laid out in the scripture. But our problem is we got to make sure that we're not so prideful and not know-it-alls that we don't need any Christian leadership. Mm -hmm. Because he put Christian lead. the mm -hmm. reason why a pastor carries, a, a shepherd carries a rod and a staff, it is for, one is for correction of those who are already saved, and one is for protection to ward out people who are not saved or ideas that are not, that can come into the body and disrupt the body. So this is why there's, and I'm hitting them quickly because I know we about to go, but there's a couple, I thank y'all so much for your comments and questions because yeah. it's very good and needed. And that's why we need to give an answer to to understand this is why we don't need to be left unto ourselves. And that's why we do need to understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, man. Hey, yeah, we're over time here. I mean, this has been rich. I mean, uh, wow. Um, yeah, Barry, I, I, Hey, man, you need to come on with us, man, because, again, th these are the kind of uh, dialogues that we have, and, and and you brought some interesting questions. So, all right. And um, Diallo, you as well, so also, yes. too, because, again, you know, these are good comments, it's, it's a lot of folks that, again, think the same way. And so, we, you know, the everything yeah. is in the word of God, and, uh, and and it's through proper teaching, and, and that's what we're here to learn. And, and no, we don't have all the answers, but but Christ is the answer. Um, man, my, should we should Seem like we might have to almost do a part three to this or so, but uh, <laughs> man, <laughs> um, man, it's what's hey, needed, man. I'm telling you, I, as Chris was insightful, so eyes tonight, man. And yeah. Jesus beats, hey, man. Yeah. We got to, <laughs> we, I know we can't make it a law, man, but we gotta, you know, normally you limit people instead of limiting <laughs> people. We gotta say, man, look, we need to at least see you twice a month. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I know, right? you know, but I know everybody be busy, but I'm just saying. Look at how these gentlemen of faith who are carriers of the Holy Spirit help add different things and aspects to the conversation, man. And I not only that, yeah. but I definitely wanted to hear more on uh, I guess a response to the ex from Jesus Beats, especially because I know that's so foreign teaching that even we in the church have heard about separating the discipleship church from the evangelistic church. But do we but I hope we see how important it is because y'all we're not in it to see how many people we can shave off. We want right. as many people as possible to come to Christ, but we yeah. also want just as many to come to Christ to be developed in Christ. And right. whenever there's anything that's standing in the way of that, this is why we say, hey, we might need to change some things. So we right. none of these rules and things to restrict people, it's kind of to help them get the freedom and not right. only get the freedom, but when you get free, we also want you to maintain your freedom by being able to develop you to the point where you can stand on your own to and the the issue is real quick is that the reason why we're talking about this because we have a lot of underdeveloped saints in the body of Christ, all right. And 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 it's all because it. yes, it's all because of this system of church that we do. So that's that's pretty much is hindering us. All right. And so that's why we are addressing this. And uh, I mean again, that's why I say between evangelism and discipleship. And what did you say? Um uh well um um Crawley, how did you word it for us? Um, evangelism killing discipleship. So uh, the evangelistic church is killing the disciple making church. Okay. And because Christ. you can't because both of them are important. And you remember last week, y'all go back and see the, the the part one from last week. One of the one of the examples that I brought up was the bathroom is just as important as the kitchen. Right. One feeds you the thing that you need to live. The other is the place of releasing. Because if you don't release, you won't live long, right? Right. So, yeah. the, but imagine this: imagine a house where the bathroom and the kitchen is in is in the same room. Oh. <laughs> imagine your toilet <laughs> being right beside your table where you eat on. Uh. See how both of them are necessary, but they're Very not good, designed yeah. to be done at the same time <laughs> or at the same place. Right. Yes. God, that amazing. was good. Hey, so, that therefore, evangelism and discipleship are important. We're not saying we can't go without either, but the thing about it is they both need to be done at different places so that they both can be focused on because when you try to do them at the same place, 
it kills one, if not both. Because when I'm on, when, when I'm using the bathroom, I, I don't feel like eating this because I've already ate. And guess <laughs> what? If I'm about to eat, if the toilet, if I'm eating right beside a toilet, it's gonna kill my appetite. <laughs> well, but we need well, both just in separate places. If, if you keep it clean, and you just be eating and releasing at the same. <laughs> Hey, that was a great example. Yes, it was a perfect example. <laughs> yes, hey, just, hey, just that was serious. <laughs> he said that's a good example. Yeah, that damn kitchen that kills hey. it because it makes it real to us. You be like, y'all, yeah, it's too good. So we're not coming against either, and that's what we right. want. And we made that clear from the very beginning. We're not saying that evangelism is not beautiful. We're saying that we we have become so lazy that we don't develop Christians to go out and and be and let evangelists replenish the church. So now the pastor yeah. got to replenish the church, and then the right. pastor spent too much time focusing on replenishing the church that he can't disciple the church. Right. <laughs> That's perfect. Hey, yeah, man, we trying to close it out, man. Uh, hey, but uh, Barry, <laughs> hey, hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you hey, have to come on with us. <laughs> hey, hey, man! If the NCAA could go overtime, we can get a little bit. We can get a little bit. Uh, hey, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Hey, see, there's that hey. special effects, man. I see you. All hey, right. Hey, the black, like we know in the black family, the two most important places to be clean is the kitchen and the bathroom. So, hey, kitchen and the bathroom. Yeah. Good now, good now. I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> what, man, yeah. I appreciate y'all, Rod. Thank again. You I always appreciate you. Likewise. Uh, someone, I was actually with someone today. I forgot to tell you who gave you a compliment on how not only things are running. Look, he's like, man, he said, Carl, you had an advantage. He said, you got that that brother. That's what's name? I said, Ron. He said, yeah, he keeps stuff flowing. So like Thank I've you. always talked about how I appreciate you, man. But I, you know, six years of doing this thing, man, you can hardly find somebody to be devoted six months to doing something like Come this. On, we now. ain't getting paid for, but we right. see that God is using it. So I appreciate you. Glory. And these brothers that, man, if I could, man, first of all, they Thank would you, make man. some great co-hosts with us, man, because hey, they have the spirit, not only that they bring different things and they take study too. So I, I just want to, hey, amen, Jesus beats as well as Chris, man, because uh, I light up when I yes. saw them both. And definitely, man, I was like, man, I thought we were going to be doing it by ourselves tonight, Ron. So God came through again tonight. Hey, amen. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Look, y'all people that was on the sidelines that even disagreed or had questions, Man, y'all help make the critical dialogue what it exactly. is because yes. you all have got questions and comments. We wouldn't have never addressed half the stuff if we wouldn't have thought about it based on what you all asked and what you all said. That's so why we need so y'all. And we need y'all. Thank you. That's so why much. we need y'all oh, you know, to watch the show and come up with these kind of questions because we don't know everything. All right. Again, so again, you all help make critical dialogue and then start a critical dialogue in your area. All right. Hey, let's talk about it. Okay. Let's go. What does the scripture say? And and again, we're having dialogue without without the disrespect, you know. And, and again, there's some things we may may not agree on. Hey, that's just a part of life. But again, we still coming together as brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and things like that. And so, look here, again, God wants us to communicate. It's all about growing and and be intentional about growing. All right, make make some effort into growing as a disciple, you know, and and. And, man, and the way you do that is by understanding this, not your truth, not my truth, just the truth. Because yeah. y'all, I'm telling y'all, once you get wise and you really know God for real, you understand your truth don't mean a hill of beans. Crawler ain't big enough to have a truth. And neither are you. But here's the thing. If we can all lean and yield to what the truth is, and it is a yeah. person of Jesus Christ, We'll all be better off. So part of spiritual maturity is saving us, is shaving all parts of us and the and the truth that we or the and the facts or the things that we want to be true, but might not necessarily be. And this is what also makes rank valid in the kingdom, because there's those who have yield and do yield more so than others. And those are the ones that's eligible for you to follow not only what they say, but the example that they live by. So we do have to trust man to a certain degree. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says that. Paul said it in Timothy. He said, the same thing that you have witnessed of me, that you've heard me speak and teach and how you see me live, he says, commit now to other flawed human beings who can do the same thing also. So the gospel is not just going to get spread Come on now. 
by the Holy Spirit, but by the Holy Spirit working through people who are yielded and obedient to him. So if you want a Christianity where, where you don't have to trust a man that is flawed, you don't want to, you're not looking for a biblical Christianity. You're looking mm. for idol. You're looking for idolatry, whereas you have become your own god of understanding and accountability. Man, well, with that said, we want to thank you all so much again. Thank you all, to Chris White and, and Jesus Beats. Hey, Salute hey, y'all, hey. hey, y'all. I'm holding on the line, everything too. And uh, hey, we'll see you for another dialogue. And and uh, make sure you go and subscribe to our channel. All right, on on YouTube. All right, please do that for us. All right, you all have a safe week. We'll we'll see you again. God bless you. Thank you all so much.